Intense fighting persists around Gaza as Israeli troops continue their assault from the air and on the ground. Civilians are turning to hospitals for shelter. The head of UNICEF described her visit to the Gaza Strip. Or they were just, they, they sought refuge in the hospital. They were staying there. Not people who were seeking medical care, just people who had come from other parts of the country or parts of the territory who were looking for a place to stay and were staying there. And I think, you know, the doctors and the nurses there are doing their best, but it's obviously a very dire situation. And joining us now is Bill O'Keefe, Executive Vice President for Mission and Mobilization at Catholic Relief Services. Bill, thanks so much for your time today. We appreciate it. Um, I know it's hard to know exactly what the situation is at Al-Shifa, as many have lost communication with those at the hospital. Apparently, even the World Health Organization uh, cannot get in touch with people there. Um, that said, what are you hearing about the conditions at the hospital and the patients? So we are hearing from a number of places in Gaza about just how serious the conditions are uh, for the 1.5 million displaced people. Um, we don't have staff in the hospital, but we are supporting four uh, churches in Gaza, the Catholic parish there, which are serving as temporary shelter locations uh, for thousands of people. And they are running out of food, running out of water, and are uh, surrounded by in an area that is under constant bombardment. And I can only assume the people in the hospital com uh, compound are experiencing exactly the same sort of thing that uh, that the, the Christian community and uh, their Muslim brothers and sisters who are sheltering with them in these churches are experiencing. It's really a terrible situation. Yeah, it certainly is, Bill. Uh, as we mentioned, the uh, Israel Defense Forces released a video showing soldiers delivering aid to the hospital, uh, but chances are that probably will not be enough. That said, do you know if any aid organizations are helping them out? I mean, it really seems like a dire situation for the patients, especially the most vulnerable, including the elderly and babies. Yeah, I think that, um, again, CRS is actually helping in Gaza to this, it, at the, to this minute. We have 52 uh, Palestinian staff who, although their families are displaced, they're continuing to serve their community. It's really an amazing testament to their courage and commitment to the uh, to their community. But um, they are they are providing electronic vouchers, kind of like a debit card that allows people to, to just kind of get those last supplies from those uh, those stores that still have a little bit left. Uh, we've we've helped over 100,000 people actually or close to 100,000 people since the beginning of the war. Um, there are groups that are trying to do the U.N. is trying to assist, but they're all running out of fuel and they're all running out of electricity and, uh, and and without fuel, as you would imagine, it's impossible to deliver supplies. It's impossible for uh, e even for the Internet to work without electricity. And so things are really beginning to shut down. We're very concerned. Yeah, Bill, we have about a minute left or so. And I was going to bring that up. What is your biggest concern with the situation right now in Gaza? Our biggest concern is even if there was uh, the, the, the possibility of bringing in more humanitarian assistance, it is impossible to distribute it um, without a cessation of violence. And there needs to be an immediate cessation of violence so that CRS and other groups can really bring in and establish a humanitarian operation for really the entire 2.4 million uh, people in Gaza. They are uh, surrounded in a, in a location. There's nowhere to go. There's no safe place. The water has been cut off. The food has been cut off. Um, and we absolutely need to have the water turned on, the electricity turned on, fuel, food, and then um, a succession of violence so that we and other groups can provide for, for, for people. We hear from our staff every day. I heard from a, a staff member. She's a nursing mother. She's, um, a dis she's displaced with her family. They're in an apartment with 20 people. And sharing one jerry can of water per day. That gives her eight ounces of water per day for her and her infant who she's nursing. And that's just obviously an impossible situation. And hundreds of thousands of others are in the same case. So we're calling for an immediate succession of violence and a greatly expanded humanitarian effort. Bill, thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. God bless you. Thank you so much for the opportunity.